Hello there and welcome back to some more Forza Motorsport 7 today. And we are taking an overview of the Barrett Jackson car pack, aka the car pack for January 2019. The final car pack to be included in the car pass. It is available as part of the car pass as well as for £5.79 or your regional equivalent, although I would not recommend spending £5.79 on this car pack. Why should become immediately obvious when we take a look at the first of the seven new cars added to the game. We begin with the 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle Supersport Barrett Jackson edition. Just a quick thing, if you don't know what Barrett Jackson is, it is an auctioneer firm in the States that sort of specializes in modified American muscle by the looks of it. And these are some of their personal favorite cars to cross the auction block. This car has 620 horsepower, 645 foot-pound torque, 3,898 pounds of weight, B-Class 566 PI, front engined rear-wheel drive. This thing has a mighty engine in it. I believe it's like a 572 cubic inch V8, uh, which is pretty incredible. Unfortunately, though, you might notice it's a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle, a car which we already have in the game, and this is basically a modified version of that car. Admittedly, this is one of the better cars from this pack. It has a modernized interior, which, I mean, I will give them credit for putting that in, but again, we already have a 1970 Chevelle in the game, and we could probably build an exact replica of this car and there's nothing massively special about this car outside of the updated interior uh, but nevertheless it is here and like I said it's one of my more favorite cars from this pack a pack which I don't particularly like <clears throat> next up we will take a look at the 1975 Ford Bronco Barrett Jackson edition 320 horsepower 335 foot pound torque 3705 pounds of weight a d-class 345 pi front engined all-wheel drive. This is a Bronco which looks like it's ready for off-roading. Of course, we already have a Bronco in the game and we can make it look pretty darn similar to this, save for the slightly nicer looking suspension bits in the back. It is a kind of cool car on its own though. Uh, I do quite like the Ford Bronco and this sort of off-roady version does look kind of neat. I'm not a huge fan of those wheels though, gotta be honest, they're very sort of early 2000s. Um, but yeah, you can pretty much replicate this car in game almost exactly, save for I think that front hood. And that might even be an option for the standard Bronco, so yeah. Next up we have the 1932 Ford Custom Double Down. 850 horsepower, 775 foot pound torque, 2,500 pounds of weight, R-Class 857PI, front engine all-wheel drive. I was not expecting this thing to be all-wheel drive in furnace. I believe it's on drag tyres or race tyres looking at those. Um, yeah, our class is a ridiculously high PI for this car, but this is one of two 1932 Fords in this pack, and guess what we already have in the game? A 1932 Ford, which you can do hot rod conversions and stuff to. Admittedly, I don't know if this exact body style is available on that car, but you can get pretty darn close, and you can probably get this level of insanity, in fact you can probably do more so uh, with the standard car. Next up, we have another 1932 Ford Roadster, the Ford Roadster Hula Girl, 200 horsepower, 325 foot-pound torque, 2,480 uh, pounds of weight, D-Class 328 PI. You can make this almost exact car, I'm almost fairly certain that car has the 1932 standard Ford Deluxe, that is, it has body mods that can turn it to look like this with sort of the over fenders, the exposed engine bay. Yeah, that car already has all of this stuff. I mean, save for that sort of skull gear shifter, which looks stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, pr I prefer the other one, the double down, over the hula girl. Yeah. Next up, we have a car which I know someone uh, especially dislikes. The 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda Convertible, Barrett Jackson Edition. 400... 965 pounds of weight, D-Class 362 PI, front engine, rear-wheel drive. This car is no different to the Cuda we already have in the game, but it has a convertible top which makes it heavier. Mmm. It's, I mean, to be fair, I think it's one year lesser than the Cuda we already had in the game, the 1971. This has a different grille on it. Woo. Apparently the engine bay doesn't open up, which is disappointing. I mean, personally, I don't mind the look of the Roadster. I think this is a better looking car than the Cuda we already had in the game, but it's not necessary. We already have one of these in the game. Um, next up, we do actually have the final two cars are actually somewhat unique. We have the 1959 Plymouth Atomic Punk Bubble Top, 
450 horsepower, 501 foot pound torque, 2,700 pounds of weight, B class 555 Pi, front engined rear wheel drive. Okay, this car is um, very custom, shall we say. I'm surprised this wasn't in that bloody Hot Wheels pack, to be honest with you. It certainly looks like a Hot Wheels, and I'd be surprised if they didn't already make something based off this car. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's got the open top canopy. It's got the exposed engine block. It's sort of Mad Max crossed with Fallout. I can almost get around this. In a normal car pack, this would probably be one of my least favorite vehicles, just because I wouldn't see myself getting much use out of it. Um, but considering the um, level of well, reuse in this pack, I guess it's something, at least. And finally, the only real, true, unique car to this pack, the one people will actually be interested in, the 1963 Shelby Monaco King Cobra, 400 horsepower, 332 foot-pan torque, 1,300 pounds of weight, Jesus, this is light, S-Class 788PI, mid-engined rear-wheel drive. Uh, now, I did get our resident race car nerd, Geraser, to somewhat educate me, a little bit on this car. Basically what it is, is it's a Cooper chassis car with a V8 engine put over it and it's sort of raced in the 60s. Whether it's successful or not, I don't really know. It's a kind of interesting looking car. Again, looks very Hot Wheels-esque and sort of the way the exhaust pipes hang out of it and stuff. You can tell it's a little bit slapped together. Um, yeah, an interesting car certainly, but uh, again, if it was in a normal pack, it'd be one of my least favourites, but I'm having to praise it as one of the better cars because, well, look at this pack. Yeah, if these cars weren't already in the game, this would be interesting, but quite frankly, these five cars you can remake near as makes no difference in the game itself, and these two are the only unique cars. Uh, all of these cars are pretty much Forza Specials, save for the Cuda and the Monaco. For some reason, the Chevelle is a Forza Special, which I'm sure doesn't really matter this much, considering they're trying to move away from homologation as much as possible, but that means these cars are basically unusable in the career mode. This is pointless, and they're charging us £5.79 for this. Quite frankly, the Hot Wheels pack, I would have been better paying for that than for this. And the Hot Wheels pack has, like, cars that we've already seen before. I, this should be a free pack. I'm sorry, this should be a free pack. We shouldn't have to pay for this. There is nothing here, you know... I mean, there's some unique cars, don't get me wrong, but there's nothing, like... Five of the cars are just cars we already have in the game and we could remake them, so what's the bloody point of them? I'm not happy. I'm really not happy. I appreciate the car pass ended, or should have ended months ago, and the last two packs we've had are free packs, but, I mean, seriously, if we go over to the last pack that we got, which was the, oh god, it was a while ago, Top Gear car pack, look at that, you get the 812 Superfast and the 720S, that's what they gave us, and this time they just give us pre-tuned versions of mostly cars we already have in the game, and two cars which I really don't care about. There's no differential here. If you're a fan of American Muscle, you might get some use out of this pack. You might really like this pack if you're a fan of Custom American Muscle or Barrett Jackson. But if you're not a fan of American Muscle, you're screwed. There's nothing here for you. It's, it's ridiculous. Do not pay for this pack. If you already have the car pass, you know, there is better things in the car pass. The car pass has been worth it in general because there has been a, quite a lot of nice cars released and this certainly isn't the case of Forza Motorsport 6 where it's nothing but crap DLC packs. But this right here, you want to end the car pass on this. This is crap. I'm sorry, I'd be more happy to pay for the Mitsubishi car pack that came out in bloody Forza Horizon 4 today than this. <sighs> oh well. Thank you all very much for watching. Feel free to disagree with me in the comment section. I'm sure a lot of people will be very angry that I do not like this pack, but quite frankly, I don't. The, the, nothing. I just don't care about this pack in the slightest. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.